Hello and welcome to another Zero demo where we're going to be looking at banking. So we're going to start off by looking at the various bank accounts and how, of course, to set these up. So I'm in my demo account and I just need to go to accounting and I need to go to bank accounts. So this is where we can manage all of our bank accounts. We can change the layout and we can change the order of these if we wish. But most importantly, we're going to start off by adding a new bank account. So one of the biggest questions I find in here is in Zero, we'll get the option to search for a bank and like it, I can see some of the various options which are available. Now, what happens if actually I'm looking to set up an account which doesn't exist in the drop down list? So maybe a petty cash account. No results. How do I set it up? It's OK. We can add it anyway. So what we can actually do is essentially overrule and tell Zero we want to customize the bank account anyway. So account name, just going to use the same, and account type, in this case, it will be other. And now, what on earth are we going to put in the account number and the sort code? No worries, once again, we can just literally put all zeros in, or basically anything you want. Um, essentially, it's just a placeholder to basically hold this in place so that we can save it. Now, the one thing I will say with banking is do customize the currency at this point in time if you have a multi-currency organization set up. Because once the bank account is set up in one currency, you can't change it. You'd have to delete it and start it afresh. So please do check that. Now, I'm going to save this. And the reason I'm setting up Petty Cash as a bank account rather than just simply a chart of accounts code is so I can manually import my transactions. And the reason that is, is crucial and really, really important is because if I go into my Petty Cash account and I remove an item for one reason or another, what it does is it unwinds the bank statement line as well. So I'll see there's an unreconciled item there, which means I always have permanent records in place. I can always reconcile to something. It's a lifesaver if anything ever changes in your petty cash account. So really recommend doing this. Now, we can also do this with factoring facilities and credit card accounts. So once again, you can add them as a new bank account. You can overtype and add it anyway. Now, the one thing I will say with factoring facilities and credit cards is when you view them from the dashboard, don't be surprised if the statement balance shows as a negative. That is actually correct because what it's saying is from an asset perspective, your bank account is a negative balance. It's not an asset. You actually owe someone money. So just note that if it does say a negative balance, you haven't done anything wrong. I'd be more concerned if it had a positive balance for a credit card account because then that means something probably is imported wrong and we just need to review it. Now, with our bank accounts, we have a few options. We can either do annual imports and we can do direct feeds. Now, feeds themselves are really, really critical, so I recommend using these. And with the open banking facility in place, we can have these refreshed. Now, the one thing I will say is if we do use open banking, don't just assume that it's going to do it all the time, 100% without fail. Please do check the last date the statement balance was imported to. Now, this isn't a particularly good example because I haven't got open banking set up on this account because it's a demo account. But if I did, I would have the option from these three drop down buttons. I would have an option here which says all of my bank account details so I can update my login, I can refresh the feed, I can deactivate the feed, etc. But one thing to point out with this is if you do use banking, just make sure that your user setting is customized so that you can access the bank account and refresh these feeds. So really important one, make sure you've got that. And just double check that it's imported to the right date. Some bank feeds, when you refresh them, may require an extra level of authentication. So you might actually need to update it and enter, say, a PIN from a card reader elsewhere. So just be wary of that. Then, most importantly, when we do actually import our bank feed, also, don't just assume it's doing automatically, but don't assume that this statement balance is 100% always going to be correct. Now, bank feeds are very, very reliable in zero, but every now and again, there might be a little hiccup, might import one transaction twice if the naming convention changes on your statement. Or likewise, it might just miss a day if something was rolled on my banking on the given day. So what I would say is at least monthly, do check your closing statement balance matches what's showing in your bank account. If it doesn't, we'll need to review these. And the main culprits for why it would be different would be if Zero's duplicated the bank transaction. So as mentioned, the naming convention has changed. And it thought, hmm, these are two different transactions, but they're actually the same. Just the names changed slightly. 
or that day is missing. So please do review your bank accounts. And I would recommend doing this exercise, reviewing state balances with every bank account you have open and just reviewing when the last date was. So that's really important. Just make sure that your bank fees are up to date and that they are correct. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, give you give you a bit of a feel for the insight of what we're looking for in online banking. And um, thank you very much for listening today. And I hope to catch you again in another Zero tutorial very soon. Take care, guys. Thank you very much. Bye.